I saw a couple of you in the comments had struggles with doors, so I figured I'd do a tutorial on how to do doors, ladders, and elevators. Okay, let's get started. The easiest way to create a door is when you're in your events, uh, which is this button up here. Right click where you want your door to be, quick event creation, and door. And that's going to automatically create a door. If you double click this, you can pick a different door if you want. Um, got a couple options here. You also have SF door, um, which is more fitting. So we'll say, I don't know. We'll say this one. Sure, why not? Actually, no, this. Oh, God, so many options. We'll do the red door. Okay. Now, location is where you're going to end up. So uh, here I've created another map, just this little room right here. And we're going to click. This is where your player will spawn. So when you hit OK, OK. We're not done yet. Um, so if you double click the event, you can see everything that it made here. Uh, this is just the automatic way of doing things. And it will it will make it, well, let me just show you what it does. So it's gonna make a sound and then transfer us. There we go. But you see how we're facing up? I don't really like to do this system because it, just does things on its own and I don't like it. First of all, player touch. So if you want to push the button to open the door, it would be this. If you want to just automatically go through a door, it would be player touch. I would only do player touch for maybe like stairs or just going through like a doorway, but that's my personal preference. Now, this set movement route, uh, the reason for this is if you look, it's basically animating these frames. One, two, three, four. Now the reason it says turn left, turn right, turn up is because if you look at if you look at character sprites, you see this is face player left, right, up. So essentially it's just it's pretending that these characters are the doors. So it uses the same animation as characters. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> So if you were animating the character like a door, be turn left, turn right, turn up. So you see here, turn left, turn right, turn up. So we're going to go ahead and, and make a door from scratch. So go ahead and delete that event if you made it. Now we're going to double click. We're just going to call it door. Try to always name your events because it's really easy to get lost with things. Now, first of all, we're going to pick our door. I'm just going to go with the same one I just had. You can choose literally any door you want. Okay, so there's the door. Now. Uh, on action button, we're going to play the sound effect. I hate every door sound effect in this engine. Alright, door 6 works for me. I'm going to turn the volume down because it's really loud. I'm going to turn the pitch up so you can make things lower pitch or higher pitch, which can actually do a lot. All right, so it's gonna play the sound effect and then right here on to transfer player, and this is where you pick your map. So I don't want the same map, I want interior two, which is my other map. And I'm gonna put the character there. Now before you close this, you see down here it says direction. So retain just means you'll be facing whatever direction you're already facing, but in this case, I want the player to face down because that's what would make sense walking through that door. So hit OK. Um, one last thing to mention, you can fade to black, fade to white, or no fade at all. I would just leave it as black. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, if you do want to animate the door, this is how you do that. So you go down here, page two, set movement route. And instead of player, this is very important, this event because otherwise you'll animate your character and they'll just walk around in a circle and it'll look weird. So we're gonna turn left and then wait 30 frames, turn right, wait 30 frames, and then turn down, wait 30 frames. The reason that you wanna wait is because they'll just do one animation after another pretty much instantaneously and you won't even see the animation happen. So you wanna just give it some time to play out. Okay, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'll go over here, press the button. Okay, maybe that was a little too slow. Let's remove that last dirty 30 frames. Let's change this to 15 frames. Uh, one last thing I would do is turn off wait for completion. 
because we don't need to wait for the door to open. We'll see the animation regardless. So with that off, there you go. Or you can delay it if you want. Um, adding weight to anything, if you just if it's going too fast, you can just literally add weight. And 60 frames is one second. So if you do 120 frames, that's two seconds. 30 frames is half a second, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm fine with this. You may have noticed though that when the door opens, you see this blank wall, and that looks weird. So if you go to your tile map. Um, whether you have custom tiles or not, just look for something that is uh, uh, black and you can just put it right there. Whoops, we don't want that to happen. Um, if you make your own custom doors, which I recommend, just add the black behind it. It saves you the trouble that I'm going through right now. It's really annoying. Um, I think you understand what I'm saying, so for now we're just gonna put that there and we'll just pretend that everything is hunky-dory. Now here's a cool thing you can do. You only have to make one door because all you do is copy, go to interior two, now you need the door to go back, paste. The only thing you have to change is the transfer player. So you're gonna edit this, change this to interior one, player's gonna come out through this door, retain the direction down, we're good to go. And now, you can go through this door. Now you're in this map, you can go back through this door and come back. Yay, magic, wow. Now, let's say this door is, I don't know, move it over here. And we'll patch this up. Let's say, instead of going through this door, you wanna climb this ladder. Um, this is something I, I was surprised I didn't know about, but it's really, really easy to make a ladder. So all you do is you find a ladder that you like. I'm gonna go with this green one up here and make sure that it's set above. If you're using MV or lower, you won't have these layers. So just FYI, but I'm just gonna put this ladder here. Now this will, well, that looks like it's not like, oh, there we go. This will work automatically, but let me show you. It's super, super easy to make a ladder with anything. So go down here to your tile sets. And where's the ladder? It's here. If you see this button right here, ladder, and you see these all have the ladder icon, um, you can do that to anything. And it will automatically make your character face towards the ladder and move upward. So for example, this pillar right here, if I want to make this a ladder, even though that's definitely not a ladder, I can do that. So we're gonna get that pillar and we're gonna put it, where'd it go? Oh, here it is. So we're gonna put it right here just to demonstrate and I'm gonna show you. This pillar, whoops, <laughs> this pillar is blocking me. So that's the other thing, they need to be circles. In case you don't know about collision, circle means you can pass through, X means you cannot pass, and star means it will appear on top of your character. So now that I've set these to pass through, it's gonna look weird, but I can climb this as a ladder, yay. And you'll notice when I come down, my character still faces forward. So, same thing up here, going up and down the ladder. Um, I'm going to remove my party members because it's annoying. There you go. I'm the only person now. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to show you how I do elevators. This isn't really the normal way to do it, but um, where can we put an elevator? All right, in interior two, we're going to put an elevator door. I'm just going to pretend. All right, I want you guys to use your imagination with me and we're gonna pretend this bookshelf is an elevator door, okay? Because I couldn't find good sprites for that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an event and, oh, actually, first we're gonna make an elevator room. So new elevator, and I'm gonna set this to SF inside. This can be small, so I'm gonna say 10 by 10. Okay, now in your tile set, do, 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 just literally make an elevator, doesn't matter. Let's make a scary elevator. There we go, those are the elevator doors. Okay, you get the idea. I really don't like RPG Maker's base tile sets and I highly suggest that you make your own if you're making a game, but anyway. 
Okay, so to make an elevator, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna double click here. Now, we only want this to activate if the player is facing the shelf. So for that, you're gonna go on page one, conditional branch, three, character is facing up. Now in here, we're going to, we're gonna do a lot. So first we're gonna transfer the player to the elevator. I'm gonna put them here. Now, you can do this multiple ways, but I would recommend just following what I'm doing. So we're gonna make them face up, which I know sounds weird. So we're gonna go into the elevator facing up, and then we're going to play the quote unquote elevator sound. So let's see if we can find something here that sounds like an elevator. There we go, machine. Perfect. All right, we got our elevator sound. So you can hear that lasts about four seconds. So we're gonna play that. We're gonna wait 120, 240, 240 seconds. That's so that the player can't move, they're riding the elevator. And then at the very end, we're gonna add shake screen. Um, I would just leave it, well, let's do half a second. And then we'll add like a little, like ding dong, like you've arrived on your floor. There we go. There we go, perfect, beautiful. And then we're going to transfer the player. We'll say here, we'll pretend the elevator comes out here. So they're gonna come out there, they're gonna face up. And all of that is going to happen on its own. Uh, let me show you what that looks like. And there you go. Um, the last thing I would add to just spice that up is like a like a dong, like when the elevator stops. So we'll wait like half a second. Uh, Actually, you know what? So we're gonna wait half a second and then the chime will happen, but the screen shake and the sound effect will happen at the same time. All right, so clang, wait half a second, bing bong, and then the player can exit. I guess maybe you could also add like, sound effects really do so much. Um, this is where I'd, I'd add the sound of the door opening after it fades to black or whatever, but you, you guys are smart, you can figure this out. So just one more time, just to solidify this. Let's take the elevator. And I can't move. All right, we've arrived on our floor. Let's take the ladder up. Oh wait, no, let's go down. Oh yes, let's take the ladder. Nope, hmm, let's just go through the door. Oh, I forgot my keys. Let's go back. And there you go. That is how you make doors, ladders, and elevators. I hope that helps, and if you have any other tutorial requests, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy RPG making or whatever.